Your Amazing Milk, the evidence-based podcast about breast milk from a dealer for you. Maybe your life has just turned upside down because you've had a baby and you have lots of questions. Or you've heard that breastfeeding is good for babies and you just want to know more about it. I'm Katie and in each episode, I talk about the processes going on in a woman's body, about the composition of breast milk and its effects, as well as tackling those myths and facts. Amazing, fascinating, and all backed up by science. In this episode, is it true that you can't breastfeed after a caesarean section? Why is cow's milk so difficult to digest? Do mothers of premature babies produce different milk? And what are oligosaccharides? Hello and welcome to episode three. The baby is here. The first days of your baby's life have begun. Around two to four days after your baby's birth, your breasts will begin to produce milk in larger amounts, making them feel full and firm. This is referred to as the milk coming in. If you thought your breasts had grown earlier, you'll almost certainly be amazed by the further increase in size. And if you've never been particularly bosomy before, you may be quite taken aback by your new cleavage. Your breast milk is changing day by day too, as it gradually evolves into mature milk. From around days 5 to 14, it's known as transitional milk. This is rich in antibodies that reduce the risk of infections in the short term, as well as diseases in later life. Nutritionally, it's high in fat, lactose and water-soluble vitamins in the balance your baby needs as she grows rapidly. One of the most important things your milk is doing at this stage is protecting your new baby's digestive system. In the short term, breastfeeding protects against dangerous gut infections and disorders, especially if your baby is premature. There's more on premature babies later. In the longer term, it helps build a healthy digestive system. In fact, your baby's gut matures as a direct response to what she's fed. Your milk also contains huge numbers of complex sugars called oligosaccharides. These are prebiotics. In other words, they feed the good bacteria in your baby's gut and help it develop a protective microbiota, a community of microscopic organisms that live in the gut and are needed for digestion and immunity. In addition, some oligosaccharides help block harmful bacteria, including the one that can cause pneumonia, from sticking to your baby's gastrointestinal tract. By the way, human breast milk contains more than 200 of these amazing oligosaccharides, whereas cow's milk only contains 40. Overall, studies have found that an incredible 30% of the beneficial bacteria in a baby's intestinal tract come directly from mother's milk. And that's not all. An additional 10% of bacteria come from the surface of the breast. So even the act of breastfeeding itself helps you protect your baby further. Speaking of the gut... Did you know... Breastfed babies poo less. Young babies usually poo several times a day, but by the time exclusively breastfed babies are two or three months old, they can sometimes go a week or even a fortnight between poos. The reason? Your breast milk is the perfect food for your baby, giving her body exactly what it needs with very little waste. So there's hardly anything left to expel. And although they may not need to go so often, breastfed baby stools stay soft. So they almost never get constipated and struggle to pass them. Yet more benefits of your amazing breast milk. Now, a look at one of the many fascinating ingredients in breast milk. Proteins. Your breast milk contains two classes of protein, whey and casein. When milk enters your baby's stomach, 
the casein forms into solids called curds, which help fill her up. The whey stays liquid, which is easy to digest. The balance of these proteins adjusts according to your baby's age and needs. The protein in colostrum can be as much as 90% whey and only 10% casein, which is why it's so gentle on your newborn's delicate stomach. It's also why your baby needs to feed little and often to feel full at this stage. As your baby's gut develops, it can cope with more casein, so the percentage goes up to around 40% by the time your milk is mature. If you continue breastfeeding for a year or more, the ratio of whey and casein will be roughly 50-50. In cow's milk, this protein balance is the other way around. 20% whey versus 80% casein, which means it's hard for babies to digest. This is why cow's milk shouldn't be fed to babies under a year old, and why it needs to be processed to make it safe for use in formula. After so much information about the milk component protein, a myth that many women talk about. Or is it a fact? Let's find out. Myth or fact? Breastfeeding can help you lose weight. It's a fact. You're burning off up to 500 extra calories a day if you breastfeed. Incredibly, you'd need to run 8 kilometres, or 5 miles, or walk 11 kilometres, 7 miles, every day to use up the same amount. However, whether this actually means you'll lose weight depends on a range of factors, such as how active you are and how much you're eating. So it's a fact, even if, as so often in life, it's not just a single factor that counts. And another contribution from our popular section. Did you know? Oxytocin is activated by sensory receptors. Sensory receptors are components of cells that perceive stimuli such as touch, temperature, taste, and so on. Oxytocin is generated and regulated between you and your baby in no fewer than four ways. As the sensory nerves are activated in your nipple as your baby sucks on it, your baby's mouth as she sucks, your baby's gastrointestinal tract as the milk arrives, and your skin and her skin by the warmth and touch of breastfeeding. You have already heard that your milk changes after birth. But what happens if your baby is born early? If your baby is born early, your colostrum will be especially high in protein, protective agents and growth factors, as well as having a different balance of hormones, fats and minerals compared to full-term breast milk. Therefore, feeding it to your baby will give her the best possible start in life. Giving your preemie colostrum also greatly reduces her risk of a serious condition called necrotizing enterocolitis. This illness is mainly seen in premature babies and causes intestinal tissue to become inflamed and damaged. In severe cases, it can even be fatal. The good news is that one study showed necrotizing enterocolitis was six to ten times less common in breast milk fed babies than it was in exclusively formula fed babies. Breastfeeding your premature baby may be more difficult as her sucking reflex will be immature and she might need to spend time in a neonatal intensive care unit, the NICU. But there are still plenty of ways to feed your milk to your tiny newborn, whether from the breast or expressed into a syringe, cup or bottle, with support from a NICU healthcare professional. If you do need to express, use a double breast pump if you can, and pump every two to three hours, which is about as frequently as your baby would feed. As well as halving your pumping time, expressing from both breasts at once delivers 18% more milk on average than expressing from each breast in turn, and the milk has a higher calorie content too. Since premature birth and caesarean section can go together, I have another myth buster for you. Myth or fact? 
You can't breastfeed after a C-section. It's a myth. Sometimes women who've had a C-section produce less milk than those who've had a vaginal delivery. But if you started breastfeeding soon after the birth and you're feeding as often as possible, it should take just six days for you to up your supply and start producing equal amounts. So another myth. This is good news. And already we have come to the end of this episode. Thank you for being with us. And one more thing to take away, just for you. A little reminder. Although your parenting books might suggest otherwise, there's no need to try to get your baby into a feeding routine. The World Health Organization and UNICEF recommend babies are breastfed on demand, day and night. In one study, mums who fared to a schedule were more likely to stop breastfeeding early. In the next episode, you will learn how mothers in other cultures experience the first weeks with their baby. This was Your Amazing Milk, the evidence-based podcast about breast milk. From Medela, for you. The references to the studies used for this podcast can be found at medela.com forward slash ebook.